I think there's a, an emerging consensus that we do have global warming. But it's not enough just to sort of run out and try to slap together some policy that's going to, quote, solve the problem. I mean, voice doubt, prolong the debate, and put off taking action. That's the Bush administration's policy with regard to global warming. Critics claim that the well-connected oil industry is directly behind it. Meanwhile, however, as the debate rages on, big oil is preparing itself for a warmer and even more profitable future. Welcome to Collateral. I'm going under, I'm going under, I'm going under, and I can't turn around. I'm going under, I'm going under, I'm going under. 280,000 square miles, about the size of Texas, According to NASA, that's how much winter sea ice the Arctic lost between 2004 and 2005. Since then, summer sea ice has shrunk about 486,000 square miles. Warming is happening more rapidly in the Arctic than anywhere else on Earth. In Alaska, Western Canada, and Eastern Russia, average temperatures have increased by as much as twice the global average. Some scientists predict that the rising temperatures will likely melt at least half of the Arctic sea ice by the end of the century, and that in the summer, the ice will melt completely. Oil companies all over the world are counting on it. Recently, Wood Mackenzie, a British consulting firm for Exxon, Shell, BP, Chevron, and many others, produced a research report called The Future of the Arctic, A New Dawn for Exploration. In it, Industry consultants detail how much oil and gas is available in the Arctic and how possible it is to access it. The report concludes that expanded drilling is now cost efficient and predicts that three million barrels a day will be extracted in the foreseeable future. There are other profits in global warming. At the 2007 Oil and Money Conference, yes, there is an annual conference called Oil and Money, presenters concurred that global warming is real human-made, and that it causes excess carbon on the planet. So, they encouraged energy companies to invest in carbon capture technology, as it may become the next trillion dollar industry. Ironic, isn't it? The oil industry is the first to profit from global warming. And things will get worse when the new dawn for exploration kicks in. Global warming means more access, but also more icebergs, more storms, and more hazardous navigation. Increased drilling and shipping in these conditions means the risk of oil spills goes up. Remember the Exxon Valdez? It sits stranded like a giant wounded animal all through the morning, bleeding its cargo of Norsloak crude at a rate of 20,000 barrels an hour. The oil is so thick on the surface that ice from nearby Columbia Glacier turned black. It was apparently the same ice the captain of the tanker was trying to avoid when he swerved from the normal sea lane. Needless to say, our government is on the side of big oil. Cheney was CEO of Halliburton. Rice sat on the board at Chevron. George W. owned an oil company, as did his father before him. What's more, the United States had long hoped that the Alaskan and Arctic oil reserves would free us from dependence on Middle Eastern oil. Our position of world dominance is threatened by the fact that we have only 3% of the world's oil reserves. For years, the U.S. believed there was enough oil under the frozen Arctic ice to change that. And now, that ice is conveniently melting. But the report from Wood Mackenzie showed that the amount of Arctic oil was dramatically less than the U.S. had hoped for. Rather than the anticipated quarter of the world's total oil supply with a concentration in North America, most of what was found was gas, and most of it belongs to Russia. No amount of denial is going to change that. But with oil nearing $100 a barrel and countries lining up to contest their undersea borders, you can bet that the debate will go on while the drilling starts. Thanks for watching. See you next time.